Good evening and welcome to the Red Hook Town Board meeting. It is April 22nd. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So we're gradually moving toward the end of April, and it's still chilly, so what are we going to do? It's 30 degrees it's, in West Virginia. Oh my. Rather just cold. <laughs> yes, our uh, councilwoman, um, Kegel, is not with us tonight, nor is Councilman Ross. So we're short, short two people. It's going to help us maybe move the, move the meeting right along. Thank you all for coming. We have a couple of little items of business to take care of. One is a very important proclamation that we celebrate every year about this time, and it is to celebrate Arbor Day. And as you all know, we have a tree committee, and Nancy Gusky, the chair of that committee, is going to be with us and talk a little bit about with some of the activities this weekend. But we like to read this Arbor Day proclamation to remind everybody of the importance of trees. So. Whereas in 1892, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of, Board of Arti Ar Agriculture, sorry, better start over, to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees. And whereas this holiday called Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska. And whereas Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world, Whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cut heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce life-giving oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife, and whereas trees are a renewable resource giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products, and whereas trees in our city increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas, and beautify our community. And whereas trees, wherever they are planted, are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. Now therefore, I, Sue Crane, supervisor of the town of Red Hook, do hereby proclaim April 24th, 2015, Arbor Day in the town of Red Hook. And I urge all citizens to celebrate Arbor Day and to support efforts to protect our trees and woodlands. And further, I urge all citizens to plant trees to gladden the heart and promote the well-being of this and future generations. And it's dated April 24th, and we are delighted to bring this to the public's attention again. Thank you, Nancy, for preparing this for us. And we have a letter of recognition and a resolution honoring another Eagle Scout in our area. He is um, a Tivoli resident. His name is Shane Diggin, and he has worked as an exemplary scout, culminating in an Eagle Scout award, where he wrote, raised funds and construction of a double-sided arbor bench for the village of Tivoli Memorial Park. And I know that his work will be appreciated by Tivoli residents and all those who visit there for years to come. So we are presenting to him, uh, and this will be part of his court of honor on May 23rd. Um, and that will occur in um, the First Presbyterian Church of Alatia on Saturday, May 23rd. Whereas Shane C. Deegan has completed the requirement for and having been examined by an Eagle Scout Board of Review and was found worthy of the rank of Eagle Scout, whereas the Eagle is the highest and most prestigious recognition in scouting, whereas Shane's Eagle Scout project was raising funds for and constructing a double-sided arbor bench for the village of Tivoli Memorial Park, whereas through his achievement, Shane has shown leadership, devotion to duty, and is a true example of the best of our youth. And whereas Shane's achievement as Eagle Scout will be acknowledged at the Eagle Scout Court of Honor 
on May 23, 2015, now therefore be it resolved that the Red Hook Town Board honors and commends Shane C. Deegan for his achievement of acquiring the rank of Eagle Scout and authorizes that this resolution be passed to commemorate, commemorate his achievement. And we are very, very, very proud of him. And I hope that his work continues for many years to come and we'll make sure that goes to his Eagle Court of Honor. Um, I have only a couple of um, a couple of uh, announcements, and and one is that by way of reminding everybody that Memorial Day is coming soon. This year it is early. It is May twenty fifth, celebrated as always on um, Memorial Day, May twenty fifth, and the parade will start at the high school and uh, we are to line up sometime after 9.30. It will kick off at 10. There is usually a beautiful um, ceremony at the Memorial Park in Red Hook at the end of the parade and it's sponsored by the FW Post 7765 and we thank them for doing this for the community every year. It's always a great, great day and uh, we're hoping for good weather. Um, the Village of Red Hook the town of Red Hook and the village of Tivoli will be having their final shared services highway project um, sponsored by Dutchess County uh, Planning on April 29th next week at 7.30 here at Town Hall. We hope everyone will be interested in hearing the end of that project and some of the goals that we have set for ourselves for the year ahead and all of the work that has gone into that project. There have been dozens of meetings and, and we really want the public aware of where we're going with that and how we um, concluded some of the um, conversation that we've been having about that uh, project, which is to <laughs> pull together the three highway departments under one administration as a beginning. There will be a special town board meeting on the 5th of May here at 7.30 when the town board will wrestle with the contents of a new employee handbook and, and I am largely introducing this to remind you all that that is a meeting that we really need to attend and be part of. On May 7th, there will be a closure of Town Hall because um, we are required to have certain trainings throughout the year and Town Hall will be closed from 10 to 2 on May, uh, 10 to noon on May 7th for required training. And I, I think you were going to put a notice about that in the paper yes. so residents yep. would know? Yes. Thank you, sir. Did, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. that's great. And um, yet one more uh, meeting that I wanted everyone to be aware of, and that is we are all invited to Red Hook High School on May 6th to meet with our Red Hook Disaster Preparedness Committee and talk further about making sure that all citizens are aware that a disaster could happen at any moment and that there are things we can do to be prepared. And that will be one hour only, May 6th at Red Hook High School at 6 o'clock. And that's what I have for announcements, I believe. Bill, do you have no, anything? Thank you. No, 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 no. Nothing tonight. Nothing no. tonight. Okay. Good. We'll stay on track then. Thank you very much, all of you. And moving right along, we have a usual um, quarter, end of the first quarter, beginning of the second quarter report by our water department director here. Hank Van Perez is here to give that. And we thank you for coming out tonight. The weather is looking a little sketchy out there, but I guess I hear the thunder. I can hear it. So, Hank, if you...
can kick off, that would be super. Do you mind if I sit up here? No, that would be that would be perfectly fine. I'm sure time. you'll be I'm sure you'll be able to be heard wherever you are. Good evening to the abbreviated to town board. <laughs> yes, we are abbreviated tonight, I am afraid. Do you each have a copy of the report? We do. It mm -hmm. is an annual report, by it the way, is. not a quarter of it. No, I meant to say it was always given in the first it is. quarter. That's true, it is. <laughs> I do have some thanks. Ah, games. Okay, there's some extra copies here if anyone is interested. Uh, okay, pretty much uh, the same as other years in the sense of the the organization uh, of the of the report, and we'll start with the organization of the board and operations personnel. Board, a bunch of veterans been around, we've been together a long time. The, uh, the longest serving member is Greg Files. He came on way back several years before Ray Rose uh, passed on. The others have been around quite a while. So, a bunch of good people. And, uh, operations, we have uh, VRI Environmental Corporation environmental services uh, doing the operations of the district. Uh, their local manager for our system is a guy named Alan Gavin. And uh, we've been a little concerned with Alan recently, but part of it is weather. We couldn't get to a lot of the work this winter because of the deep snow. So they promised to clean it up this month, and I did see that they cleaned out the uh, storage shed last week, so maybe they're making progress. Administration is me and Carol Little. And in order of the procedure here, the uh, meter readers go out and read the meters, and then Carol Little puts together the bills, and Sue McCann collects the money. I don't know what she does with it. But... <laughs> uh -oh. It goes into your water account. Yeah, I know. I guess we'll discuss that a little later. <laughs> And all the money that's missing. Hank. <laughs> this is okay. not helpful, Hank. <laughs> no, we did pretty well, actually. Uh, what did we do during 2014? We had a little problem uh, with graffiti on the water tank the year before. And the fence needed repair, but before we could get it repaired, we had to remove some poison ivy, etc. So we got the poison ivy cut back and the fence repaired. And I checked with the operators, but they hadn't seen any new graffiti, so maybe the enhanced barbed wire around the top might just be enough to discourage people. And maybe the interest wore off. Who knows? And we finally got rid of the old pressure tank that had been lying uh, on its side down at the pump station. It was the uh, pressure tank from the old Annandale Water Company. Again, it was in that little uh, water area, the little pond area on uh, Aspen Wall, between Aspen Wall and Al Alby. And we moved it to this new location that it served for a year, probably two or three years, as a pressure tank for the new district, or for the, our new system, until we put the standpipe online. That was 1989. So we finally got rid of it, and they actually paid us a few bucks. A few years ago, we would have had to pay to have it cut up and all the way. But so we got a couple hundred dollars out of it. And then we had a problem last fall with uh, one of the welds. Um, it was people were reporting cloudy water, which meant there's there's air in the water. Um, the first assumption by our well guy and Jerry Gilnack was a very experienced operator is that uh, it was pumping air. Well, we didn't know why, but we assumed the pump was a problem. So we pulled it and replaced it with a new pump, <laughs> and it still pumped air. So anyway, the problem <coughs> seems to be that, like many wells, the sediment builds up down around the, the intake, and the water inflow is restricted. So we put in a lower volume pump, 150 gallons per minute instead of 220, and that's working fine, and that's adequate. 
But uh, what we'd like to do, I'm getting ahead of myself here, we'd like to have that well rehabilitated. And it looks like we could do it this year. The, the cost looks like uh, five or six thousand dollars, thereabouts. So we can afford that. And that was about it for work items in 2014. Uh, water quality, all the tests were okay. The uh, <clears throat> special tests are uh, disinfection byproducts. They have to be done every year. Nitrate has to be done every year. And then synthetic organic chemicals, which are man-made chemicals like pesticides and herbicides. Uh, there's about 40 of them that have to be checked for. So we were okay there. The health the department engineer uh, inspected our facility in December. It skipped us the year before. I guess he felt we didn't need it or he was too busy. But anyway, he had a few concerns which we addressed. The major problem was the uh, piping, the output piping, which we are addressing currently. The contract uh, is to be signed by the contractor and then comes back to sue and then we can go to work. Uh, 2015, just business as usual. Monitor what's going on, do the tests, and uh, that's about it for just ongoing work. Special tests this year are lead and copper. They are not only special in the sense that uh, we only do them occasionally, but we have to have 10 samples in uh, 10 different homes or taps. Um, when Rich Kane was here the last, uh, he did it, uh, maybe that was the previous time, I don't know. But he, uh, he only sent in six or eight or something, so we had to do it. Rich was not quite on the ball at, toward the end. Uh, so we'll do that this year. That's about $500 worth. And then we'll replace, replace that pump house piping. Um, the key item is the output pipe that goes down through the floor. The chlorine had leaked on it, caused a lot of rust, and who knows how long it might have lasted. But uh, it's one of those things you don't like to take a chance if you don't have to. And we'd like to rehab well one, which I addressed a few minutes ago. Um, the tank inspection is due, well due, we had scheduled it for this year, but given this other work, we'll postpone it for a year. And future considerations, the primary focus is that storage tank, and the question still is, uh, we'll see what, what the condition is, but will we repaint it, or we'll just let it go? and uh, rebuild it with a different uh, type of structure. We'll see. I've got some homework to do in terms of verifying painting expenses versus uh, the cost of a new tank. Wasn't it fully inspected a year or so ago? Oh, five years ago. Time flies when you have fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's been fully inspected, I think, three times. Mm -hmm. 89, 2005, 2010, something like that. Yeah. And each time, it, you know, minimal, minimal uh, deterioration. Mm -hmm. So, what's next? Water main extensions, uh, you know, we could do some. Uh, some of them would be nice to do to complete a loop, and give us alternative routes, but you know, good justification. So, we, we don't have any plan. And with Hoffman and Kirchhoff, we'll be involved as necessary. Mm -hmm. okay. Which reminds me, one of the things I wanted to get done, the emergency interconnect between the town and the village had never been tested. We've had it scheduled now twice. I don't know whether it got done yesterday or not. But it was supposed to be done last Thursday, and the village uh, operator couldn't make it, so that was scheduled for, I think, yesterday. And of course, it was a little rainy off and on, so I don't know. But they are work talking to each other, and they will get it done. So the village and VRI are working together yes. on that? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. One of the reasons I really am concerned with it is that uh, when we uh, replace the piping, 
Mm -hmm. We'll have to have the system shut down for a couple of days, and uh, our storage should handle that. But, you know, you never know. Mm -hmm. If we need a little extra water, it'd be nice to have the, that source available. Could you have Carol call the village, call the village and ask them if it's not happened when they intend to get together? Yeah. Our Sometimes do we really need to tickle, you yeah. know. Our operator has kept us informed. Yeah. Um, but it's not happened yeah. yet. Just had for a couple of good reasons. Okay. 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 Now, has that ever been tested? <clears throat> in, the in the 20 years it's been there. So. That should be interesting. <coughs> it is interesting. Yes. <laughs> okay, financial business. Our operating income was up uh, almost $13,000 from last year. I suspect that was, uh, well, it's more of suspicion. Our water rate increase mm -hmm. was probably the largest uh, factor there. Um, in terms of expenses, we did spend a little more money this year on that pump situation. We actually spent uh, quite a bit more. Looks like about 16k more. Um, but our income was 120.3, expenses 110.8, so we still had a surplus of revenue over expenses of almost 10,000, 9.5, which is more than I expected. And in terms of reserves, um, the transmission and reconstruction reserves haven't changed. You don't get much interest these days. And I didn't do any transfers last year. Um, we actually did a couple of transfers in order to pay for that pump. It turns out that the unreserved balance, which is uh, I view it as kind of a bucket where the revenue goes in and the expenses come out, and that's still $94,000, so that's way too much. We'll have to transfer some of that, so I'll work with Ann to see how much is uh, feasible. My guess is forty or 50000 should be transferable to the reserves. So we'll talk, I'll talk with Ann about that. Mm -hmm. And Operation summary, um, we pumped and billed less water uh, last year than we did the year before. And in spite of that, our revenue was up quite a bit. So it must have been the, the rate increase. Mm -hmm. um, our, the real good number, important number there is the pump to bill ratio, which says, are you leaking a lot of water? Are you losing a lot of water? And we're not. Anything over 90% is uh, unusual, very good, considered to be very good. So we're still doing well. Any questions? Yeah. Once okay. again, looks great. Okay, well. Thank you. Still, uh, still fun. Still fun. I can't <laughs> beat it. That's great. Thanks, Hank. Thank you. We don't need a little fun, right? That's right. That's right. Thank you very much for staying Thank and, you. and coming. It's, uh, like I've said it before, it's really a pleasure working with you people. Thank you, and right back at you. <laughs> it's it's, uh, it's uh, one of the first things I did when I came on board was to serve on the water board. And the, yeah, you did. It's been, it's been wonderful to watch continued service and, you know, develop the relationship between you and the public and you and Bard College and it's just moved along smoothly because you've had a lot of competent volunteers. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I thank and you for all your work. Predecessor also. Yes, and absolutely he was wonderful. Yes. Thank you, Hank, so thank much. You. Good night. Good night. So an annual report, one more annual report down. That's great. Um, our next presentation, and they are here early, which I'm delighted. Thank you for coming. Uh, we have a relationship, as some of you know, with an organization called Sister Cities. And it is an international organization. It is um, participated in by a number of communities throughout the country and throughout the world. And 
it has a huge catalog to show all of those cities, towns, little villages, whatever they may be, um, and who they are considering their sister city or sister village. And there we are, Red Hook, in this immense volume, and it's really kind of exciting to see. And, and we thank the students from Bart College who, and Mickey who got us involved in this, and um, a lot of um, good stuff, for me anyway, has come from that committee, and in particular, um, how wonderful it was to host the mayor of the little village of Massa in the West Bank of Palestine uh, two years ago. Was it two or three? It may have been three years ago. Three years ago. And so um, that was done on, I think, Memorial Day, maybe, or, or no, in the fall. Hard Scrabble. Hard Scrabble Day. It was in the fall. Yeah. So, um, since then, more BARD students have been involved, and with us tonight is Jordana Rubenstein Edberg, who has agreed to come in and talk to us a little bit about her work with the Sister Cities Project and her work with the villages that she's interested in, and one of them being the Red Oak Central School System, I understand. So, welcome, Jordana. Thank you for coming. and bringing some of the committee with you, and you may introduce them as you go along. Come right up to the microphone. Yeah. She has tons of energy, this woman, so. I'll just sit up here. Hello, everyone. My name is Jordana. I'm a sophomore at Bard, and so this project, I call the Sister Cities Project, is somewhat related to another project that I co-run with Amir Shalabi. This is Amir. Um, he's from Massa, and that's called the Bard Palestinian Youth Initiative, which is how we sort of found out about this town and have done a lot of civic engagement and um, education initiatives there. And that's part of a department at Bard called the Trustee Leadership Scholars where a lot of student-led projects that are involved in Red Hook, in surrounding um, communities, and other places in the world, and the director being Paul Marienthal. And he has some brochures about this, these two projects, the Sister Cities Project and the Bard Palestinian Youth Initiative, along with tons of other amazing student-led projects. So if you want any of those, talk to him. Um, so just to tell you a little bit about this project, so we've been, Red Hook has been an official sister city with Masha for a while now. And um, what I've been doing since last year is going every week to three classes this year and last year, four classes of ninth grade students at Red Hook High School. And we do a lot of things, mostly cultural exchange. So we talk about Masha, we, um, last year we exchanged scrapbooks. So the students in our class made a scrapbook um, about where they're from, what they do, what their families are like, um, what they want to do in the future, and then they sent that over, and then they received one in return. I went there um, over the winter and brought back, a lot of the students in Massa did writing that we made into a scrapbook there and brought it back to this class. And we've also started to do video exchange, so like the students in Massa filmed themselves asking a question, what movies do you like? The students in Red Hook responded like that, back and forth. And it's a really, really interesting process. It's very far away and hard, I think, to sometimes make that connection, but in, in the coming weeks, it's been really, really cool to see how, um, even though we're so geographically far, how close you can feel when you receive something written from someone that is to you. Um, especially, I know I went, when I was in Massa in the winter, showing all of the work from the Red Hook students Oh my god, the girls in Masa were so excited. Masa is a really small town, and I think, Amir, maybe you can even speak on this. I think to receive some little bit of care from the outside world was just so exciting for them. And we had videos. A lot of the students in Red Hook, we, I filmed them. Um, one girl did a dance, another girl sang, two boys did like a guitar duo thing. It was really, really cool. And they were just so just. They felt so special, I think. Um, so that's a lot of the work that I've been doing recently, is mostly going in. Um, the 
classroom, what we do in the classroom ranges from, uh, you know, sometimes we'll do a dance lesson, like learning Palestinian folk dancing. Um, I've gone in and had food that's traditional food, and we ate the food and talked about the festival there and things like that. And then we also kind of sometimes just think about um, our own homes. What are our homes like? What do we think is special about our home? Masa is also very much like uh, farming. They do have olive trees there, so there's kind of a connection. Different foods, but very much a similar relationship to the land and relationship to family and community. So in that sense, it's really, really similar. And so we sometimes talk about those themes. What's important to us? What do we want to share? What would we want to represent? Um, in addition to that, we've sort of been working on the committee on having another sister city's relationship with a town in Israel. So it hasn't come into existence yet, but we're working on it, and hopefully that will also happen. Um, and I think something that I would love to see in the future is more involvement and more um, sort of the town of Red knowing about this relationship. And it doesn't just have to be me working with these few ninth grade classes, which is awesome. But I think it would be cool if we could kind of invite more of the town into this. And I would love to help do that. I certainly can't do that on my own. Um, so anyone who's interested in this project and is interested in having more of an exchange and doing something maybe more public, some more uh, festival-like things, I would really encourage that and love to help support that and be a part of that. So that's, that's it. <laughs> Um, does anyone have any questions? How many times have you been to Masa? I've been once. once. I went in the winter and then I'm going again in the summer. I recall when we first became involved that the students um, who were led by a student from Masa who was studying here at Bard went back and they, one year they built a library? Yeah, so, yeah. so the Bard Palestinian Youth Initiative which is how we're connected with this town. We do a lot of things. We've built a library, a park, a youth center. Um, we do a lot of education and art projects. So when I was there, um, we were kind of teaching a class that involved a lot of reading of poetry and stories. And then we had the students write their own poetry and their own stories. And we also did photography projects and drawing projects. So yeah, we do a lot with that. And that kind of ends up overlapping, I think, with the sister cities aspect, because a lot of what they write about ends up being a letter you know, to the students at Red Hook, or a poem that we share, or a video that I show them, and things like that. We've also recently accepted uh, a young woman from Mas Ha to study at Bard. And this will be the first woman who's from the village who's studied outside the West Bank. So this will be a game changer for yeah. the village. Wow. Like this will be a big deal. That is a big she, deal. I, I was there and I and handed her her a, a acceptance a couple of weeks yeah. ago. That's very and exciting. It yeah. was awesome. quite a fabulous moment. Very exciting. Yeah, yeah. really That's great. Wonderful. I'm so excited. Great. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Jordani, you are so busy right now. I know that you're. I know you're concluding a, an academic year, and I just can't thank you enough for agreeing to come and let the community know it will be on, on public access television for people to see next Monday. That It's on several times a day and uh, probably again before we have the next meeting. So thank you for taking time to do it and for thank bringing you. your friends with you. And so, Paul, thank so, you. So we just say, if, if somebody does want to get in touch with us, um, how do we do that on... I work at Bard. I'm easy to get a hold of. Paul Marienthal at Bard College. Um, get in touch with me. Call the college. And we have your contact information here. Oh, I'm good. sure the town okay. clerk has mm -hmm. your contact information. My office has it. Great. Um, and we're happy to entertain questions from anyone who comes to us about Great. their interest in the program because I think we could use an infusion of more yeah. Yeah. people to uh, lift the load. Uh, there, there are a lot of activities we'd like to have and not too no. many of us to pull it off. I've, we've sent uh, recently invitation letters to the head of the youth uh, organization 
uh, were, the hope is to bring uh, Nadal, who I saw, who was the mayor, who I saw recently, uh, another contingent. Just They just would like to be here and see yeah. what goes on here and have that exchange. And it makes such a difference to them. Um, they're deeply committed to education. Uh, yeah. And they're extremely interested in having Bard's presence there, okay. um, which is largely what we do is we're teaching. Yeah. Is, how many students at, at Bard are involved with with uh, with this? I'll let Amir answer that. Okay. This is Amir Shalabi, who is from Masha and the leader of this okay. project. Well, of the of the Bard House Youth Initiative, or of the yeah. sisters? Yeah, you know, just in, in the general sense. So, um, over the years, we usually would have uh, twenty students from Bard go to Masha mm -hmm. over the summer. Uh, we also have multiple affiliations with other schools. For example, the U United World Colleges, uh, Pearson in Canada. We've been in connection with them for quite a while, and they've been participating in our summer programs. Uh, they're going to be participating in our summer uh, in our coming summer program. Mm -hmm. And we have the Kings Academy affiliation. It's a small small um, AIP high school in Jordan where multiple students and multiple locations and multiple summers they came and helped us with um, with the summer program and they came uh, once in the winter in 2011. Um, this this year uh, we have 13 students from Bard or yeah, so? Yeah, it's 13 and then we also have students from Alcoz University in Palestine. Well. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, six college students coming from there, six college students coming from Pearson and then about 13 of us, maybe with us it's Yes, including both of us. In Masha, at this time, when the Bard students are, it's what's happening in Masha. Yes. Okay. It, it's a, it, there are only 2,000 residents yes. there, so when there are 25 of these students moving around the village, it's really what's occurring there. It's a big presence. Yes. Yeah, it's a, it's yes. a big presence, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's great. We also have, do a kid's summer camp, so we, uh, like, all the kids from the town basically come to our your summer camp in Masai. We also teach, uh, of course, we teach English for youth and adults mm -hmm. as well. So everyone, everyone in the village is very much involved with our um, with our project. Is this an academic program at Bard? Is it? Is it? Is there a course element to it or credit element to it in any way? Or did they? Well, right, so we'll, so we'll talk about CLS for a second. <laughs> I'll just quickly hand these out. Then. <laughs> Here, you can. Uh, the TLS program, this, for those who don't, in, don't know what BARD students do in the world, this is what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not academic because these programs, mm -hmm. many of them run for three or four years. Mm -hmm. And if I were to give academic credit to, to Amir, for instance, I would have to give him a master's degree. Okay. <laughs> These are huge amounts of time. Mm -hmm. If you look at the brochure, the one on the front, mm -hmm. these are students who go to Cali, Colombia and teach violin and cello mm -hmm. in the poorest slum in mm -hmm. one of the most dangerous cities in the world. And they just received a $10,000 grant to do this again this summer. Mm -hmm. And the amount of energy and time this takes, I don't know how I would dole out academic mm -hmm. credit, but we do pay the leaders of these projects. So it's a job, and the college takes this work really seriously. You know, the mission at Bard is mm -hmm. um, is is enlightened citizenry. We're really interested in uh, producing people who go out into the world and do things. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a way of the college saying we take this really seriously. Mm -hmm. So we pay the student leaders, and then there are hundreds of students who volunteer in these projects. But not academic, and I, I really wouldn't want it to be academic. Mm -hmm. um, how I would cl clock it or rate it, it would be impossible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But isn't that an amazing and wonderful educational lesson that you are sharing with each other that volunteerism can, without a paycheck or, or a degree, at the end of the day, end up being one of the most satisfying things you will do in four years. You know, the learning that goes on there has got to be amazing. 
Yeah. yeah, I think if you ask the students, it, it, they would pretty uniformly say this is the most important thing they're doing at school. That's <laughs> very satisfying. <laughs> That's great. That strike that one. <laughs> <laughs> Edit that out. No, you should. I think that's wonderful. It's, it's t for you to be congratulated and thanked, and we certainly do here, and we hope we can generate <clears throat> through this introduction yet again to the program uh, more people to be aware of what's going on and maybe get interested in helping as we do um, community events and support what you're doing. So thank you Jordana and thank you for coming and being with us. Uh, Jill is in the back background. Jill Lundquist has served on the committee for probably five years. Thank you for all the work you did. And Paul, of course, is the voice. He's, he's the one that gets everybody's attention when they're out of control. He has this baritone that just goes out there. And it's my elementary herds everybody in. <laughs> well, thank you all. I know how busy you are this time of year, and I thank you for taking time to be sure, with us. It's a pleasure, of course. Yeah, Great pleasure, folks. Thank you. <clears throat> Um, the next item on the agenda is, I believe, going to be led by Bill. And I hope, Bill, are you prepared to lead a conversation about Ed Sunsis? I just want to briefly, <coughs> the uh, Ag and Open Space Committee previously had recommended uh, that there be a definition of agricultural fences in our zoning. Mm -hmm. Um, and they uh, proposed the language, which we have, and uh, that they recommended uh, modifying Section 143.28 of the Zoning Code um, to say that agricultural fences shall be exempt from building permits and height restrictions in all zones. That matter was referred to the ZRC on a companion request <clears throat> to consider whether we should also have a definition of spike fences in the zoning to uh, counteract the, um, the uh, uh, absence of any regulation for agricultural fencing in the town. And um, the ZRC at the last meeting proposed language uh, basically not to define a uh, spike fence which would have certain legal uh, <laughs> you know, problems with respect to interpretation and future lawsuits, etc. And uh, their proposed language is, is basically that, um, that no fence or other structure in the nature of a fence could be erected uh, in the town of Red Oak for a purpose other than as defined for agricultural fences or as defined in our regular zoning for fencing under 143.4. So in other words, it would say that in the town of Red Hook you can, you know, you, you must have a legitimate purpose to put a fence up under a regular zoning or uh, for special agricultural fencing. So that matter is, uh, has not been prepared yet in a form to be referred to the town board, but the next step would be for the board to receive it and then to refer it to the legal council okay. for their opinion. Okay. So um, it's a work in progress, but it's pretty much concluded. So Good. they've all done a great job, the Ag and Open Space Committee and the ZRC, Zoning Review Committee. Working on it. That's great. Working on it together. Thank you, Bill. That's great. <clears throat> um, this is just a, a, a notice to let everyone know that the water damage, in case you weren't aware of the water damage, has received the attention of our um, insurance company and we have uh, been offered a settlement. We have accepted it and um, we are now looking to uh, <coughs> develop a plan to um, uh, take care of some of the, the um, damages that were done during the ice damming that occurred to so many uh, rooms in this in this building and so many homes and offices elsewhere as well. I think it's a familiar subject. So we will continue to report on that as we get work done and and um, the, the insurance um, spoken for. 
Okay, um, board reports. There is a Zoning Board of Appeals uh, monthly report, and uh, actually there are two monthly reports. And I wonder if Bill O'Neill, you would do your best to summarize these? Yeah, well, and just in summary, the ZBA has been working on an application um, uh, by Bard College to place a single story structure at the site of uh, the former uh, Annandale House. And that matter was discussed at the recent meeting, and it's on now for a public hearing um, to be placed on the May agenda. Uh, <clears throat> and the other matter that's been before the ZBA has been uh, on an application of Norman Gregg for an inn and a restaurant on uh, Pitcher Lane. And that matter, again, is still being discussed and um, being reviewed. And the public hearing, which was held at the last CBA meeting, uh, uh, April 8th, <coughs> was not concluded and has been adjourned and is going to be continued to the May 13th CBA meeting. Um, so that's also a matter still in progress. Okay. Great. Thank you, Bill. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if anyone has a planning board uh, summary. I do not. Um, while I know they have met, um, I don't have anything to report tonight. And the Ethics Board has not met, which is often a good thing. We have a report from the Assessor, and Bill, I'm going to ask you to... Um, well, the Assessor uh, submitted his report for uh, April 22nd, um, and just indicates that um, uh, <clears throat> he's working very hard on the exemptions. There were um, a total of um, 1,048 exemptions uh, submitted and accepted by our assessor in the town of Red Hook, and uh, he's, he submitted a summary of those exemptions, what it means to our tax base with um, the equalization values of those exemptions. And so <clears throat> it's a bit of a complicated formula, but he's uh, submitted that. Um, and uh, reports that they've achieved a 100% uniform percentage of value for the 2015 assessment role. And he's completing the sales and valuation analysis for this year's 2015 role. Um, and uh, reminds everybody that Grievance Day, of course, is scheduled for Tuesday, May 26th. And he's uh, listed uh, the matters that he's been working on in preparation for Grievance Day. Um, we had specifically requested uh, an, an, an assessment on the current status of the valuation of uh, commercial properties in the town of Red Hook, um, which has been an ongoing uh, matter. <clears throat> and he's reported that they hired McGrath and Associates to do a commercial market profile for the town that was provided in the middle of March, but we don't have a report yet on that. Uh, on that summary of the valuation for commercial property, so I'll pursue that with him. Um, he's, he just says that he's currently reviewing the tentative values before the role is processed at the county later this week. So that's the report from the assessment <coughs> office, and uh, I'll follow up with it. Okay, thank you very much, Bill. There is a Town of Red Hook animal control report and um, it serves the quarter of January 1st, I'll show you March 31st. Um, in terms of dogs at large, there were, it would appear, um, about 10. Um, they have been picked up and reclaimed. Uh, as far as I can tell, most of them have been either a dog at large reported. We, most of you know that there is a leash law in the, the village and town of Red Hook, Antigone. So um, this is response to dogs at large. Um, there are no barking dog reports. There were 10 wildlife reports. All of them referred to wildlife rehab. There was, were no improper shelters. Um, no dog bites, um, no need to assist police with this police agency, and there were eight cats, and they were 
referred to the SPCA, and here in the village of Red Hook is the shop Living Eden, and there is a wonderful woman who's very interested in rehabilitating lost cats, and her name is Bobby Jo, so she takes kitties in and finds home for them. And uh, the only comment from our animal control officer is it seems there are more cat and kitten calls from last year than this time last year. This year than from last time, from last year. So we have some work to do in getting feral cats spayed, I have a suspicion. That is animal control officer. Um, the business manager's report you will find is in your packet under the Dutchess County Joint Government Efficiency Plan Worksheet. And what it is, is the required um, information we, we, you will recall, voted to join with other um, municipalities throughout Dutchess County and submit to Dutchess County our efficiency plan, which is the 1% of the levy savings for uh, the next three years. And the plan is before you, and it is to be submitted by May 1. So Anne uh, made sure that we had it uh, in front of you tonight for your uh, consideration and approval. Um, I believe it's a good plan. You can see that the 1% of levy is $27,000 for the town of Red Hook. And the savings that we, if the plan goes according to plan, um, will save us almost $79,000. So um, we're hoping that this plan is realized and we can continue with it for the next three years and meet the goal of the 1% uh, of levy uh, that has been challenged to all municipalities. Are there any questions about that? Okay, and I don't think I need, you've already approved doing that, so I'll just make sure that Ann submits that to Dutchess County in time for the May 1 deadline. Um, building inspector, there is a report here. Bill, I wonder if yes. you could get that. Uh, the building inspector's report, he had uh, 40, uh, actually 50 total inspections uh, for this period. <coughs> The, um, and of course, each inspection is detailed for the purposes of the uh, board and is recorded in the record. Um, permits issued, there were 27 permits uh, issued, and again, the report details uh, each and every permit, where located, and the number. Um, certificates of occupancy um, and uh, Certificates of, uh, what's the CNC? Certificate of completion, maybe? Uh, and anyway, yeah, yes. the total number of certificate reports for the period of 36. And again, they are detailed uh, in, in the report. There were a total of two complaints received. And as far as um, money goes, the permits uh, and the uh, searches and uh, certificate fees totaled uh, $3,910 received by the building department during the period. Okay. So that's uh, the report by the building department. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, the next then uh, report that we know we have a, well, I guess, we, I guess, Harry, you and I could have a word or two about the meeting that we had today. Mm -hmm. Would you like to um, comment on that as as best you can with with um, a little assistance from the the materials that were handed out today? Mm -hmm. We we this is the shared services um, uh, meeting that I referred to earlier tonight, where there will be a final public meeting next week, but we met with the consultant and Dutchess County Planning Commissioner today, along with the entire committee, 
in our highway garage to give everybody a sense of what it, where it is that we are proposing we um, pull together all of the resources for the for the highway services of the three municipalities. And we've come a long way, I have to say, since we started this discussion. It's taken a lot of conversation with um, the boards, the, com the, the steering committee that Harry and I serve on from the town, and the, the mayor of the villages of Red Hook and Tivoli, and two of their board members, as well as um, the actual um, highway and DPW employees who have had a fair amount of input in this. So, um, how can you entice people to come to this meeting? In the 29? Yes. Well, what we'll be, what we'll be talking about is the specific savings that we have identified um, that will be, and will be implemented uh, between the three municipalities and the highway operations of the three municipalities. Um, and we're really working on, on, on putting in place uh, the foundation of what we're, we have perceived to be the beginning of a trajectory toward more and more sharing of the highway operations. We don't have a total end game and plan yet, in, in mind yet, um, but we, uh, we, we're going to initially work on uh, and making a common a record keeping uh, and common controls, um, which will help to share 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 the uh, uh, <clears throat> be in a position to to account for the all of the sharing that we will be doing, with the intent that uh, we we will we will have uh, reduced expenditures in the in the years ahead, and uh, how how far exactly what the end game is, as I said, uh, is not yet obvious, um, but, but we're working on it. Mm -hmm. And I think out of today's meeting came a, a fairly clear agreement that having um, a capital plan, a, and a, a long-range capital plan on the part of each of the entities, <coughs> which hasn't necessarily been true, for, it's true for the town of Red Hook, but there's some work to be done to capture some of the information for the other two entities because they have the same people working on highway functions as they have working on, for example, the water department and the sewer system in the case of Tivoli. So trying to identify specifically how much time is spent by those employees on just highway um, matters is a little tricky and, and uh, needs some attention. But in order to gain the efficiencies Harry described, we need to know where we are in order to know where we're going. So um, we, we're getting closer, and I think the plan is a good one. And I, I am just so, so happy that we were able to undertake this. It's been a lot of work and a lot of um, uncertainty, actually, when we started. And, and mm -hmm. I, I feel very strong about it now. So thank you, Harry. So I hope everybody will come out to the meeting. Um, I said it before, it is on April 29th here at Town Hall at 7.30, and there will be dessert if you would like. It'll be a lot of fun. So everybody who watches this on Monday night will have two days to get ready to come to the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, police department report. I have a, I have both the Dutchess County Sheriff's Department report as well as a Red Hook Police Department report. In the month of March for the Dutchess County Sheriff's Office, there were a total of 83 incidents with which the patrol officers uh, concern themselves in that month. Um, and, and as you well know, if you've heard these reports before, they range in anything from traffic stops to property checks to road hazards and suspicious activity. And the Dutchess County Sheriff's Office serves us well in their patrols here in Red Hook, 83 in the month of March. Um, in the 
case of the Red Hook Police Department, and this <coughs> would be for the month again of March. They also have limited um, patrols going on because they, we have limited budget to ask them to patrol on our behalf, but they do so, and um, we rely on them as well. And the total incidents for the village reporting were 101. There were 15 arrests, and total tickets issued were 46. That's the police report for the month of March. Is there, Harry, let's see, purchasing. purchasing, yes, would you give that one? Please? Yeah, we had an, actually a busy month purchasing, and I say that every month, every month seems to be quite busy in the purchasing department. There are 87 uh, purchase orders processed for a total of uh, roughly $135,000 worth of purchases, the largest being and surprise, surprise, almost $16,000 for salt for the roads. <laughs> and, and that hopefully is the last purchase of salt for the season. Um, we have um, put in place the, the hiring of a, of a uh, trails planner um, and, and hired that person. Uh, we have uh, uh, the contractor repair, as Hank said, the, the pump house for the, for the water system for the water department. And those of you who are here tonight will notice when you go out, there's a floodlight. You'll be able to find your car, <laughs> which was the, the last project that's been in the works for a while. It took much longer than one would have expected to do that. Thank you. And I think you know, there's yet still more to be said about the water department. District 1, in terms of the day-to-day -day work sessions and so forth. Do you have these two reports, Bill? Yeah, I mean, in addition to what Hank uh, reported in his annual report, we do have reports from February, March, and uh, into April. And um, <clears throat> his reports show that all the tests have been completed and done, and, um, you know, everything seems to have uh, been within range. Um, for example, chloroform reports are none detected. The turbidity and the chlorine residual amounts are all within uh, range. Um, there is a note that the um, <clears throat> that the uh, hydrant flushing is scheduled for May 19th and 20th for all the citizens who want to be aware of that. But uh, the report also shows that the filters are all operating satisfactorily. Uh, the meters are uh, working fine and being uh, read. And um, as far as the plans, I think uh, uh, Hank mentioned this, but they're going to replace a, um, a pipe um, in the pump house, and that's uh, in the process of being done. And they're working <coughs> with the village with that interconnection that you spoke about, um, Sue. So that's a report for the water department for the early part of this year. You know, whenever we, we, thank you, Bill, whenever we read these, they, they are so lacking in, in excitement and, and urgency because things move along smoothly month after month, and then you pick up the newspaper and you hear people are running out of water, that, you know, that California is going dry, and we just forget how lucky we are. Right. So, thank it's you. It's almost like that. we don't want to report this too loudly. I know. <laughs> <laughs> People it's it's, all, just it's all very, a very good thing. <laughs> yeah, it's a wonderful thing. And we're very, very fortunate to have all the volunteer help we have. And Sue McCann, who, who gets all that money in and nobody knows what she does with it. <laughs> uh oh, no, you said that. <laughs> I can't believe you said it either. That was really fun. That's yeah, so well, unlike Hank, yes. but it was very fun. I'll have to address that tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I, I'm going to ask Nancy to talk about Arbor Day and some of the activities that are happening this weekend, and then we'll, we'll take a break and see if there's anyone here who has public comment before we go into some other uh, committee reports. Nancy, thank you for being sure. patient and for all the work you've done. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for reading the proclamation also. Well, we, we think we finally have everything pulled together. Um, this year, we're going to sort of be a hub 
um, we have the trees are being delivered tomorrow and for the village, for the town, for Bard, for South, for East Fishkill, for Newburgh, for, and for Cobleskill. They're all coming to this, to where we usually get our trees. I think it'll be 40 plus trees. And um, so uh, I've been on the phone a lot. Oh, man. <laughs> and, um, so uh, we're on the map now. Um, yeah, that's great. So they're coming in about noon time tomorrow, and I think we pretty much have enough help to get it all unloaded. So then, but we started this week. Monday, we selected the winning poster, the Arbor Day posters at Mill Road School. And there were 19, and some of the sayings were just adorable. Um, if trees are extinct, we're extinct. Um, be calm, plant a tree, um, and if you cut one down, plant two. I mean, some of them are just plain adorable. And um, so we selected the posters. Eleanor Friary um, gave us a wonderful lunch. And um, they will be posted here for two weeks. Great. And um, so that, you know, if somebody's coming through, some family wants to come and see them, they'll be here. Um, so, um, Tuesday we had our tree meeting and talked about all the plans for this weekend. And um, Friday, Michelle Decker, I will meet her at Hearts Gravel. And we are going to um, dig 19, prepare 19 sites. We're also going to do the village sites. And um, then on Saturday, uh, we will plant the trees. And they're going to be planted at uh, Rokeby, Adams Road, Jefferson Road. Um, and Hoffman Road. We're planting 10 trees in all. Uh, the village is doing 11. Um, let's see. Uh, and Jean Dunce is going to do the lunch again for us. And it's been very difficult because we weren't sure we were going to get the trees this week. We just found out um, Monday, I think it was, that we, they are coming. And um, Jean Dunce has been so patient and so wonderful, and sh so she's going to do the lunch, and Sue McCann, her trusty partner, is going to help her out, as she always does, and Nancy Roberts is also going to join them. <coughs> and I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that you do this. It's our pleasure, really. And I'll tell you, it's really delicious. It's delicious. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it's really great. Jean does the cooking. Yeah. Yes. Well, you serve beautifully. Okay. <laughs> no, really. Um, so, um, we're going to be here on Arbor Day. Uh, we are giving out seedlings and transplants, and we have tree information and manuals and posters, and we have even have a tree-themed um, raffle basket. Mm -hmm. And um, it's our little outreach, and we hope that people will come and pick them up. And um, uh, Eleanor and Linda will be here to take care of that. And after, after that, we will have lunch for all the volunteers on Saturday. Okay. And do they need to bring shovels? Yes, they do. But people who are, yes, and most of the people I've already spoken to, and, you, know, and you know that we have uh, three new people who will join the committee, and um, they're amazing. They're just <laughs> hit the road. I mean, it's like, I mean, I'm having trouble keeping up with them. So um, they've been wonderful pitching in right away. Um, and just to mention quickly that we're having a tree, um, a commemorative tree ceremony for Mary Chaffee on May 23rd at 11 o'clock at the highway department site where George has his tree. We're going to do a little line of uh, commemorative trees there. And um, we are Tree City for the fourth, uh, well, we, are, we have the uh, Tree City Growth Award for the fourth year in a row. And I think that's it. So, okay? Okay, yep. thank you very thank you. much. Sure. Sounds like a full weekend. <laughs> it is good. I, I really just would like to mention that Eleanor does that, the program at school. And that takes, that is a three week uh, commitment. It's she does all the preparation. She organizes the whole poster contest. And it's wonderful. She does the whole thing. It's quite a, quite a huge commitment, and she does a wonderful job. 
Well, I thank you so much for your leadership in that regard. You, your enthusiasm is like contagious, sir. It wouldn't still be going as strong as it is. Thank you, Nancy. Um, I started to say we take a break after Nancy, but then I realized we've got Sarah Imbenden who's waited patiently. Do you have a report from CAC? Yeah, I have that would be wonderful. Is there anyone else who has a committee report that we need to hear from here? Okay. Okay, hi, I'm Sarah Bowden. Um, okay, so I'm here for Lori Husted, the committee chair for the Conservation Advisory Council report. And um, this is, we'll do a more formal one in writing just so you can see all the different things we're doing and obviously our minutes are up on the mm -hmm. web. But here's a few things. Um, you probably heard that we were involved in a bunch of amphibian migrations in March and April on the DEC coordinates with Winnicky and a lot of other groups, um, local efforts to help the salamander cross the road, as it were. And in Red Hook, we care a lot about our water. And these creatures, amphibians and um, toads and frogs of all kinds, there's maybe, I don't even know how many species, but it's upwards of 10 that they track. There's just tons and tons of them. but. Around here, I think it's below 10, roughly, that we have. I think our group saw about eight different ones on Wales Back Road alone. So we had six sites that got monitored in Red Hook that we know of. There's lots of citizen scientists, we call them, who go out on their own. So we're not exactly sure, but we know for sure of six. And what was really neat is that um, while we coordinated, people volunteer, and a lot of times they bring their kids. And then the kids get to help, and you just you know help the animals, they're crossing the roads to get from where they winter to where they, the vernal pools where they lay their eggs and, you know, do their business, <laughs> and then uh, eventually they migrate back, but um, the migration toward the vernal pools is what, what you can really track, and so every year we turn in our data to the DEC, and over time we're compiling, you know, what species are around, what are their numbers, and where are they, and all that stuff, so it, it really helps with a lot of different uh, aspects of planning and keeping water um, resources <laughs> clean. So anyway, that was really neat. Um, and if anybody out there watching or here had data sheets, they need to be in by April 30th. So hopefully you already turned them in, but if not, you need to turn them in. OK, so we're busy with that. We also, as you know, we did our, um, our DC camp scholarships last week here. Um, we had two. Kid, two middle schoolers who are going to summer camp, thanks to the generosity of local groups, um, the Masons and um, the VFW in Red Hook. And um, we also have four Red Hook seniors who have applied for the Ruth OJ Scholarship. That's great. And they're really strong applications this year, so now our job is to pick one lucky person. But all four of these kids are applying to college to study environmental science of some kind, and they're all just really, if you read the application, so inspiring to see just the things that they want to do with their college career. So that's really cool, and I think it's a testament to how hard we work in Red Hook to make sure our kids you know, value these things. Um, one thing we wanted to mention, um, so on May 2nd, you probably already talked about this, that there's a town-wide cleanup that Mickey and others are helping. CAC is putting together a team. We haven't decided where we're going to clean, but we're throwing down the rubber glove <laughs> to any other town committees <laughs> or boards that want to form a, a you know, team to do it. Maybe we'll post how much trash we pick up or something. We'll figure out some way to make this a little competitive, but we're putting it out there that we're, we're doing it. So mm -hmm. we hope we'll see a lot of people out on May 2nd. What's the timing for that? The one to four. One to four, yeah. Has, has the highway department been notified? I spoke to them a, a day or so ago, and they, said, and they said, what? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm sure there'll be more town uh, coordination of that as we get a little closer. They really should know. Yeah. Do the volunteers meet here? Yes. They meet here, right? To pick up gloves and different bags and things, right? Yeah, 1230. Yeah, I mean, that's a serious question. Yeah. yeah. They, are being, they have been notified? Oh, yeah. They will be. I, I, I don't know why I thought Brent had taken care of that, but I won't. Okay. Well, Teresa's, I think, um, I, I only know because, because there's a, a group from Tivoli who was going out on canoes on that same day to, to clear up the river. So I, I told Emily how to, how to deal with it, and she's worked things out with the highway department, and I was kind of in the middle of it. 
So uh, when the when the uh, when they, the the post pickup of of the river is already arranged for, but uh, Teresa was questioning about about the the rest of the pickup. Yes. Okay. So it's me second. Um, Randy, me third. Um, we're just constantly attending webinars and and seminars and things and keeping our ears to the ground. There's. Um, Hudson River Estuary grants through the DEC that are coming up and people on the committee are attending meetings for that and trying to keep track so we'll let you know what we find out. Um, do you want me to talk about the single stream, dual stream thing? Okay, so um, as when the town has talked about their contract for the recycling center this year they asked us to look at the question of whether Red Hook should make the leap to single stream recycling as whoever uses the recycling center may know. Right now we sort by, um, I guess we call it dual stream, but really it's cardboard in one container and then, I don't know what you call like plastics, glass and metals in one and paper of all kinds in another would sort of be how you characterize it. And then other, you know, bins for other things like special items. But. Um, Welsh, is that who we yes. contracted with? Mm -hmm. right, had said that if we made the move to single stream that we couldn't go back. And so we really took a hard look at it and after talking with TJ, who's our recycling center coordinator, and really looking at the numbers and doing some research, we really feel that we should stay as we are. And the, the main reasons for that would be that, um, number one, it's just a higher quality product. When you look around, although single stream was thought that you know that it would encourage more people to recycle what people have found is that although the volume might be slightly greater the quality goes way down and the market for that is down and then that means that a lot more goes to the trash as opposed to really being recycled and we feel that Red Hook provides a very high quality recycling stream right now and that we should keep it that way especially because we don't have that the opportunity to go back you know if we if we went down the single stream road who wanted to change it in the first place? You know, I think part of the, the idea, the, the question about changing it was that, um, you know, if we went single stream, would it, for example, alleviate some traffic pressures back there? You know, maybe if we only had, if we had fewer bins that were being taken more often. I'm not, yeah, yeah I don't know. I think there was also questions about cost. We, we think that it's possible that we'd actually get charged more if the quality of what we're sending out isn't as good, or if they had to haul it more often, because if you're putting everything all in one tub, you can't pack as much in. You know, like right now, if you've got a whole big, what are they, hauling container of paper, you know, that can really get, you know, TJ does a great job mashing it down in there, same with the cardboard. If it's all scrambled in together, that's the thought, that we'd have to haul more often because it would take up more room in the container. So those are our, reasons and we can formalize that in writing but that's our recommendation that we stay as we are and, uh, yeah I can I can oh. comment a little bit on that bill um, because uh, in talking with the hauling company um, they have had requests from other towns to go single stream because residents requested it. They, they like the idea of just throwing everything in a great big bin, never mind sorting mm -hmm. cans from bottles. That's not a red hook. But I think when Rhinebeck we do it, single and, and Rhinebeck, Rhinebeck has gone single yeah. stream recently. And the village and does single stream in their pickups. Yes. I see people out there, they, they love going to those different bins mm -hmm. and yeah. segregating mm -hmm. things. I mean, I think yeah, it's hard cycling in the, in the time when you had to you know separate your tent from your Yes. But, you know, all the steel, you know, all the different, you know, and the, all the, the office paper from the colored and the newspaper, you know, all that stuff. So I think our, our system's already fairly convenient yeah. the way it is. But. And I think it moves fairly quickly there. I think yeah. like this, you know, I... Uh, and I we could work on signage, you know, I feel like mm -hmm. we could continue to evolve the conversation of whether we can mm -hmm. make things easier back there. Mm -hmm. I think for new people, sometimes it can be hard once you're used to going there. Right. You know, it's easier to mm -hmm. handle, and that maybe for new people, it's a little tricky to figure out well, where am I supposed mm -hmm. to park, and you know. But well, if, we, kind of, if, if you and the CAC think that we need better signage, more signage, different signage, let us know because yeah, we sure. we we do want it to work yeah. well, and um, there are people who are committed to coming every Saturday. They love it. Love to come. I see Bill every time. I <laughs> 
Okay. You, uh, you and Maynard Ham. <laughs> <laughs> All we have. We're working on a possible textile collection, but that's still being worked out. So mm -hmm. we'll let you know when we mm -hmm. get that better. And when do we need snow get that? Well, we were thinking about trying for Apple Blossom Day, but that's May 10th, and it's really coming up quick. So we'll see. I f our feeling was if we did basically the idea is to do something sort of like our annual e-waste collection, where residents could come in a one-time thing. You've cleaned out your closet. You know you've got it all set for summer and you've got your big bag of stuff for Goodwill or wherever you usually bring it and if you don't know where to bring it or if you have especially textiles that are like sheets and towels or ripped things or like I know a lot of stuff that my kids wear it's got a hole in it or something so you don't really you know you can't really give it to a consignment store or even to be reused by somebody or you know shoes that are just beyond fixing you can, this company will still take them and then you know they sort it all out between the stuff that can be reused and the stuff that should be more like rag material and that kind of stuff and they shred some of it and you know there's just all kinds of ways you can repurpose those kind of materials. So our idea was to do a once a year textile drive as well as an e-waste drive. So the thought was possibly to do it in the spring if we could pull it off. New Paltz has, does two. They're just doing one I think this weekend. I don't know if you saw the papers but um, they, they feel like it, it, it really you know, came off well and it didn't take that much time ahead of time to get people interested in it. And we do get a lot of questions about where people can bring, especially these things that can't be reused. You know? mm -hmm. um, so if we can't do it in the spring, you know, before the end of May, our other thought was the Bard students. We thought, you know, well, they're clearing out everything. Maybe they would like to have a place where they could bring things. So mm -hmm. um, if we can't do it then, then maybe we would do it in the fall, like later fall you know, again, toward that season change. So, you know, we'll, you know, we'll keep figuring it out if we can't pull it off for this spring, but. Yeah, I was, um, I was happy to get the feedback from TJ, who was very supportive of the idea. Um, the, the, the only, um, the only question in my mind was that the company that does the collection and provides the bin, if I'm correct, is a for-profit. And are we running risk of setting a precedent with and that on on a town uh, property? And yeah. that's and it's something it's, I don't know. I haven't yeah, been able to get an answer about. Yeah. So we'll we'll keep so so I'll about I'll do my best to get that answer so that you, you yeah. Know. Um, the thing is that the company that I was talking about, Us Again, I think, or they may call themselves Use Again, but it's Us Again, basically, um, is for profit. There are other non profit ones, but some are religious affiliated. And again, I thought, mm -hmm. you know, and sort of like, same, same where question. do you go? You know, so right. we just, we, we'll look at all the possible options, especially if the for profit one is not really an option. So, um, you know, I don't know that yeah. it isn't. I did. There's a few different companies that are listed as possible. I'll try to so get. I'll, I'll try to get Association of Towns maybe has a yeah, has a feel for that as to whether it's something that, you know, on town property yeah. is is. I mean, the one positive I thought, if we are allowed to do it, I think a lot of the nonprofit collectors of these textiles don't pay. You know, for obvious reasons, they're not making any money on it either. I guess, mm -hmm. but if we do the for-profit, then we do get five cents a pound. And, you know, places like Bard, and I think we could too, if we had a different type of contract, we could get paid for some of the recycling that we do, you know, the cardboard and the paper, whatever, if it's high enough quality again. Mm -hmm. So to my mind, it sort of wasn't any different. The question is, you know, we want to make it really clear to residents that that's what's happening. Mm -hmm. And then, obviously, you know, go back into town town-wide thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just an inter it's an interesting idea. It's a great idea. But something that we don't do that often, you know, get paid for the things that we're giving away, basically, yeah. you know. So. Well, I, love, I love that you checked into it, and it sounds like something that makes sense. We just need to check yeah. one yeah, sure. one or two more places to yeah, make sure that we're, make sure. we're okay. Yeah. So if we can't pull it off before May 10th, you know, I mean, really, by the end of April, we'll probably have to know whether we're going to do it or not, but so we'll figure it out. May 10th would be the day of it, if we were to do it? I mean, that's, that we were thinking of doing it on Apple Blossom. Apple I think Blossom. in the past, we've done an e-waste collection the same Saturday as Apple Blossom, but maybe do it, 
either at the recycling center where we do the e-waste collection, which is really sort of there was yeah. a spot behind yeah. the highway department. Mm -hmm. Either do it there or, um, you know, I know we've done it in hard scrabble plots in years past. You know, some place that's still in the main vicinity mm -hmm. of things that are going on that day, but not right in the middle where you're going to jam mm -hmm. things up, you know, either. But I think it's an open question whether that's a day where people feel like doing mm -hmm. something like a textile drive or mm -hmm. whether they would rather just come and have a hot dog and, you know, mm -hmm. browse all the flea markets and stuff. So we'll keep, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. If anybody has any suggestions. Just let this see. Well, you appreciate you okay. even finding out about it. It was okay. great. Thank, Thank you me. very much, Sarah. Sure. Okay. Thanks, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so quick break. Um, is there anyone in, in the group who wants to make a public comment? Because we kind of skipped by that. Did you have anything you wanted to say? No. Okay. Nikki, how about you? Uh, thank you, and thank you, Harry, for reminding me to contact uh, Teresa about that, as I said. She's that. awaiting your call. Yeah, <laughs> uh, call the office in the morning and hope I get through. Um, so, related to the county legislature, I haven't been here for a while to report. Um, in uh, January, we just really did the reorg um, and, and things of that nature. Um, reappointed um, Rob Rollison as chair of uh, legislature. Um, for those who aren't familiar with how the board meeting works, uh, we do have committee day a few days before the meeting of the whole where um, the resolutions um, either fall on a consent agenda or a non-consent agenda. The consent one means that there's really not going to be any more discussion that in committee it, it um, was decided that it wasn't going to be anything that was uh, terribly um, controversial, so we just vote on those as uh, one big group of resolutions. Then we, on the non-consent, at least for February, uh, there were just a couple of things adopting the permanent rules of the legislature and um, the issuance of serial bonds for a, a settlement. And in March, we uh, passed, uh, the county actually passed the Agricultural and Farmland Protection uh, plan that was uh, put together by a group of farmers and people related to agriculture by the county. And I, I understand there's uh, a long, uh, a lot of work involved in putting that together. And, and um, the county can be proud of the work they've done on that. Uh, there was a local law in connection with the outdoor restraint of companion animals. And really what that is, is many of us, myself included, uh, when we let the dog out, um, our dog, we tether on a, a line, and, and what that has to do with uh, how long the tether can be, how long the animal can be out during the day, because apparently uh, in this harsh winter, the SBCA got a lot of calls about dogs being left outside on these, on these tethers. Um, there was included some fines, uh, and that was really kind of the sticking point of why it has been tabled for the last two months. So we'll have more information to come about that local law. Um, in April, in a little bit busier month, uh, I was pleased to present a commendation to the Red Hook Library for their being uh, voted the best small library in the country and the, get the $10,000 uh, from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Um, the uh, Duchess County Water and Wastewater Authority will be taking over the water system at the fairways at Red Hook Golf Course. Uh, we passed resolutions for serial bonds that amounted to $7 million uh, for bridge repair, highway equipment, um, various vehicles in the county, um, and some extensive road repair in Hyde Park. Uh, additionally, the uh, contract for the Sheriff's Department uh, was ratified, and a few months prior to that, the contract with the CSEA was ratified. Uh, so that just leaves one more outstanding contract uh, that has been um, expired for a while that the county executive is working through. Um, we appointed an acting commissioner of the Dutchess County Family Services, uh, and Sabrina Marzoka, I think is how you pronounce her last name. And Owen Raptor, who has worked a lot with Red Hook, has been appointed the commissioner of 
uh, planning and development. So those were really big issues at the county. Um, as Sarah said, we will be having in Red Hook our sixth annual cleanup day on May uh, 2nd from 1 to 4. Uh, report here at 1230. We will have some supplies in gloves and uh, bags and a few of the uh, pickers that the kids grab, <laughs> grabbers, uh, before the adults get a chance to do them. Uh, we do recommend wearing boots because it's still a little wet out there. Um, and be prepared to, uh, you know, put on some spray for ticks and mm -hmm. things of that nature. Um, and Jen Norris was kind enough to, uh, the village trustee, to put together this wonderful flyer related to uh, bike rodeo and tour to Red Hook, um, which will be the, um, the bike rodeo will be on Saturday, May 16th. Um, in combination with the tour to Red Hook. So I will leave this in uh, Sue um, McCann. If you could get that up on the uh, town website, that'd be great. That's it for me. Great. Thank you. Thank you. May is a loaded month. Yeah, it's a very busy thing. month, isn't it? Every weekend. Whoa. Yeah, that's exciting. Good. Thank you all. Mm -hmm. That was just great. Um, Okay, so um, where are we? I, I just just by word of <coughs> a program that was held at Bar College, the Disaster Preparedness Program that was prepared by Red Cross for Citizens Preparedness. I did attend that. Mickey was there, and um, it was a beautiful, probably the first beautiful night that we've had. And I suspect it was the evening that kept people from attending because it was hard to go indoors on a night like that. But those of us who went learned a lot. And I did have materials that I brought back that I thought might be very useful to put up on the website. So Linda's going to work on a single page because it was back and front. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make sure that we were able to put it on the website for at least a while for people, to, you know, those of us who can't attend or won't attend these these trainings to understand that you, really your first your first means of defense is yourself. You take care of yourself and your family first in a in a major disaster. And these tips are for you to be prepared in that event. It sounds kind of ominous to be talking about this, but you know, everybody thinks you're never gonna need it. And you don't need it until you need it. And then it if you have children or family, it's good to have an organized way of dealing with a crisis. And it could be something that will make you evacuate your house, evacuate your neighborhood. We don't know. But it's important to know what you need on hand is enough to manage, I didn't know this, for 10 days. You may have to evacuate for 10 days. That's often the case. So. Get your little ditty bag ready, Harry. <laughs> You've got to pay attention to these things, and I'm going to provide you with everything you need to know. Okay, maybe it'd be 10 days I can lose some weight. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I don't mean to belittle it. But <laughs> no, you're not belittling it. I, I just want you to put the proper, mm -hmm. you know, things that you may need in those 10 days. A little blankie, mm -hmm. in case it's cool. Uh, all sorts of things. Um, it, it really is a very serious subject, and, and actually the person who presented for Red Cross gave, gave out great materials, and um, it's very succinct, and we'll get it up on the website so people can read it and just kind of, you know, take it in. You may not want to put together something today or tomorrow, but be aware uh, that there's certain certain items that you should know where they are in your home, and you should talk with your family about if you have to get out of this house, let's, for example, we'll all meet out there at that tree so that everybody understands if somebody isn't there, they're not somewhere else. You know, everybody goes to the same place. It's such a simple thing, but we don't do that. We scatter often. And um, so they have a lot of good tips, and, and I'll share that with you. Enough of that. Enough of disaster. Intermunicipal Task Force. Mr. O'Neill. Well, at the uh, meetings in February, March, April, we've been uh, 
<clears throat> reviewing a 24-page draft of historic preservation law that was prepared by Green Plan. It's the revised uh, draft dated March 5, 2015. So we've been um, actually going over it line by line, considering suggestions for revisions to the proposed law. And that review um, is pretty much done. And the, and the law now is in the hands of uh, Green Plan to finalize the, uh, the final draft to come back to the task force and uh, to be reviewed <clears throat> and uh, ultimately submitted to the uh, town board. And uh, more recently, we've been looking at an old 2006 zoning law that was proposed uh, on flag lots in the town of Red It's always been a discussion um, about the use of flag lots and development. So in 2006 there was a lot of discussion about it and the, the proposed draft just uh, laid there. No, nobody's really done anything about it, so we're trying to take another look at that. And that continues. Okay. Thank you. Um, just wanted to mention that we have received uh, another letter of interest for our consideration in this case for the Ag and Open Space Committee and it is from Talea Heckman Taylor and so we're going to put on the agenda for the next time when hopefully will be a full board of five um, the reorg because there are several considerations for committee vacancies <coughs> so this is one possibility so more more to come on that. Do you have anything from Ag and Open Space in regard to uh, business from well, bill since last time? Well, it was in part of that report on fencing, but um, Ag and Open Space, I think they're going to invite those two ladies to uh, come to their next meeting mm -hmm. to uh, discuss with them the prospect of uh, being appointed to the Ag and Open Space Committee. Mm -hmm. So the okay. we'll follow-up with that, I think it's next Tuesday. Good. Okay. Um, Rep. Commission Harry, I think you've got this one. I have a very lengthy report, <clears throat> but I'll um, summarize to say that of all of the two-page uh, two list here of things that have been done by the Rec Committee all boiled down to getting the Rec Park ready to go, like, like putting a new roof on the snack bar and buying a new freezer because the freezer in, in the snack bar died of, of old age over, over the winter um, and a, a, a tree was removed that was in the playground and was uh, in bad shape and dangerous. Um, um, the, the wetlands of the new park have been delineated so that we can move forward with the, uh, some uh, uh, development in the, in the new park uh, as uh, resources are available. Um, um, all the, the water had to be turned on. Oh, by the way, we had a fishing contest, which was a great success. There were there were kids all over the place hanging their their, their trophies out, and, and had a great a great day. That was uh, I think it was April for the first weekend in April. <coughs> and the Linden Avenue Bridge, of course, is an issue there, <coughs> and we're going to change uh, how people get to the park. But. The work has been to get to get the the, uh, the park going and, and ship shape for the, for the spring, and it's uh, well along in, in that context. Good, thank you. And later than usual, as you can guess. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah. Thank you. All good. And um, I believe I'm to report for on behalf of Andrew Carr of the Senior Services Committee. They. Um, I have only one announcement tonight, and that is that our longtime friend and assistant to many offices in Town Hall has decided to fully retire. Um, Sheila Franklin has resigned from the Senior Services Committee. And um, while we cheer her on for some of the things she most loves to do, we're, we're going to miss her terribly because she's just such a meticulous keeper of minutes and thoughtful person that uh, she's been secretary many, many years here for the town and we're, she's going to be badly missed. Um, additionally, Ed Sanford has tendered his resignation from the committee. 
So um, we're going to miss Ed. He had a lot of insight and drive and excitement and, and enthusiasm and has been a part of the committee for several years. So there are some vacancies there. And um, as you know, there had been planned a food drive, I think, for this spring or early summer. But they, Andrew talked to me today about that food drive and about the committee in general not having um, um, Sheila's assistance in organizing some of the uh, behind the scenes. And so they may postpone till fall that food drive instead of trying to pull it off this year. And I told them I thought we would all understand that and more to come at the next uh, report. But um, Andrew will be reviewing some um, applications that we have on hand from people who wish to do some part-time secretarial and and he'll uh, let us know if he has replaced Sheila. She's going to be very tough to replace. So that is the Senior Services Committee for the moment. And uh, Trails Committee, Harry, I believe you were going to report this. Mm -hmm. Did you receive that? I think it's in your file, but if it isn't, no, it, here it, it is. This is it, right, okay. right here. Um, okay, there was one, one, one meeting. Um, uh, that they um, selected, selected a trail planner, which we moved forward with as mm -hmm. a town board to, to hire the planner. Um, they're, 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 uh, they're, they're working on the, the sidewalk. Uh, the center of Red Hook, yes, they're, they're, they're working with the planner on, on that. Uh, on the sidewalk that we're going to build out front here, down, down to uh, Hard Scrabble Square, uh, and they're also working on on the Tour de Red Hook bicycle uh, bicycle ride, and the, the date the date is not yet set. Yeah, I think the they're combining set. it with the Village Rodeo for the yeah. 16th of May. Yes. May 16th. Okay, they didn't know that when they. Yeah. Them. Okay, so public. Get your bicycles tuned up for May 16th. <laughs> <laughs> That's always a fun one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I think have I missed have I missed anyone? Is there anything that anyone has to report? The Economic Development Committee. Is there a report there? I didn't realize. Go ahead. No, well, there isn't. There's, there's a report that was sent from by by them to me this morning. Good. With okay. along with me, that and they they did. Here's there's two two of these. That you can have a look at the um, uh, uh, Dick Wambach is creating the, the the website there, and and he he gave uh, four samples of of uh, what what kind of a, a a an introductory page for when you when you looked up um, Red Hook in the Hudson Valley, and and there's four different four different pages here. There was a great deal of debate over which they're all different. Um, and uh, the first one says, you'll love Red Hook Hudson Valley, and it has fish hooks on it, and with a heart. Those are red hooks, Harry. Mm -hmm. And fish hooks. Yeah, well, that's, this was, this was, this was, that's fish hooks. That has a barb on it. That's a, and the second page says destination Red Hook Hudson Valley, and it's a it's a creative star behind that. And and the, the third one says discover Red Hook Hudson Valley, and it has a real hook, Red Hook hook. Okay. And it, and it, and the last one says says um, hooked on Red Hook Hudson Valley, and it has a fish hook instead of the the Red Hook hook. And and I, uh, a few of us decided that we liked this one. <laughs> discover, discover Red Hook Hudson Valley. So when you went online and you said you wanted to go to Red Hook, it says, "Well, we want to do something in the Hudson Hudson Valley." That uh, if you if you at least been interested in Red Hook, it would show this way um, when when you googled it. Good, good, good. And, and, uh, I like that he's got Hudson Valley there so that they don't go to Brooklyn. Yeah. Well, that was the idea. Yeah, right? <laughs> Put the Hudson Valley in it. And, and the Discover, the Discover with, uh, with the debate of all four of these, the Discover seemed like the one that was mm -hmm. most, 
most assertive in terms yeah. of in I terms of great, uh, generating great, interest. Great word. So so far that's the selection, and these will stay in town long. Good. Terrific. Well, look for that. That's mm -hmm. the lovely It's been harder to put together than you can imagine. There's so many technical problems with it. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody on the board have anything that uh, have I missed anything that you know should have been announced? Okay. Okay. We've got some um, quick correspondence. Um, one that Brenda sent along today, even though she's been on vacation, she's been in touch with us a lot. Um, she says that she has spoken with Lori Heady of the Hudson River Estuary Program about giving a final presentation on the Cornell Habitat Connectivity Project that was conducted for our town a few months ago. And the goal is to invite all committee and board members who might be interested and dis uh, they discuss the possibility of presenting at the last town board meeting in May, which would be the 27th and wanted to know if we would reserve an hour of that meeting for that presentation discussion. And I think that's a great idea. We're mm -hmm. meeting anyway, and we'll set aside yeah. an hour. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, plan on that, 7.30 to 8.30 on Wednesday, the 27th of May, to um, get that Cornell Habitat Connectivity Project uh, presentation done. It's the 27th? It's the 27th, right. It's very interesting. Yeah, I th I'm really looking forward yeah. to that. So that's good. I told Brenda I'd let her know as soon as I talked with you all, and I think that's a great way to handle it. Um, I want you to know that we have uh, some decisions to make at the May 12th meeting regarding uh, some of the town's anticipation notes that are maturing on June 4th. So more about that uh, then. It's just a matter of business and, and serious business, but we'll have a presentation about it. And I'm going to ask our um, financial advisor, maybe if she'll come, if there's any doubt about what we think we want to do. Um, we have received from the Department of Transportation um, a notice from uh, John Cummings, who is a civil engineer, and he says to Mr. Balkind, Bill, uh, Bob Balkind, who forwarded our request to lower the speed limit on Annandale Route 103, if you'll recall, and he says, we found that it is appropriate to establish a 25 mile per hour speed limit on County Route 103 from a point of Point two miles south of the intersection of Kelly Road to 9G on the northern end. It is the responsibility of Dutchess County Department of Public Works to install the new 25 mile per hour speed limit signs as, special, as specified in the National Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices. It is also the responsibility of the Highway Superintendent of Red Hook to determine if certain existing Conditions on the roadway may require additional signing. So um, the official notice is for our files, and um, that has been accomplished. And that's all I'm prepared to announce tonight. Anybody got any other correspondence or anything we need to discuss? <coughs> is there any public comment out there that we need to discuss? Any questions? Is there then a motion? Is Sarah? there one? I was going to make a joke. I know it's kind of late, but no, that's the next fine. time the rec commission wants to put yellow tape up on, in the playground, they need to put a note as to why, because all the kids ask, well, why? Why is there yellow tape on the, you know, because they were taking down the tree, right? Yes. Is that why? Yeah. yeah so they the need tree, to put a note for all the, the moms. The tree was in the playground and it was dangerous. For all the other moms and, and other people who get asked why constantly about why the yellow tape is up, they should put a little thing up that explains because that's the only place in the whole town where you're going to get all those questions. Okay, so it started all sorts of rumors right, among, exactly. the, among yeah. the five year olds. The prime scene. <laughs> <said. laughs> right? Okay. Is that what they were thinking? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it never occurred to me. No, that, that, that would make sense. Yeah, that's a great idea. Thank you for bringing that. Sure. Okay. Well, it's been a pleasure. We'll miss. We've missed Brenda. And yes, 
Motion to adjourn. Oh, okay. Second. Okay. All in Bye. favor? Aye. <laughs> Thank you all for yeah. coming and enjoying this with us. We enjoyed it. I hope everybody else did. Yeah. Soon again, no executives. No. Oh, can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you want to keep these? Uh, 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 sure. yeah.